four, amen? And the Lord brought you a mighty long ways. I could care less if you want to act immature and things like this, but God blessed me with it, amen? God gave it to me and I intend on using it for the Lord, amen? amen. <laughs> Don't get in all that. <laughs> but here all his sons and Joseph, and then they sold him out into the hands of Egypt and finally he gets into there in Pharaoh and you know how he goes to the various stages from the pit to the prison into the palace and God has used Joseph, has helped prepare and make way for his brothers, the future that would come to pass. What he told his brothers, how that they would bundle the sheaves up and how they would bow down before his, and now it's coming to pass. There's a great famine arose within the land. There's a great famine, and even the, he, uh, the children of God, they have nothing. They have to come to who? They have to come to under Joseph who's second in command up in Egypt. God has given him a great financial mind that he did. He told him, God unveiled unto him, said, here's what we'll do. Seven years of lack, seven years of plenty. And he said, I want you to put some back. And in doing so, the family, they came to him. And they had to bow. They needed food. And God would use Joseph to help sustain. You'd be surprised sometimes who God would use to provide in your life. Don't be so arrogant because somebody out in the world sometimes who is even lost will come up to you and sometimes, I'd like to give you this. Well, don't turn it away at times. Just take it. Amen. If they want to do it, take it. Because it's even like that woman, little uh, woman there who used to pray within her house. She had a neighbor who was an atheist and she would pray and earnestly sought God. She was needing some food and she knew God would provide. And most of the time, the same way David said, in the, he said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. He knew and that little lady knew that God would provide. He would make a way. That atheist next door heard her calling out upon the Lord. He comes over with, at times with a, a bag of grocery, knocks on the doors and said, I brought you some groceries. And he said, I told you. I, and she said, oh, praise the Lord. She began to praise the Lord and get happy. She said, man, he said, ma'am, he said, the Lord didn't bring those. She, he said, I brought those to you. Oh no, she said, the Lord brought the, he may have used the devil to do it, but the Lord gave it, amen. <laughs> Works the same way, who do you think sit there and paid with Moses? Who, who took care of him at time? He used the Egyptians to fund that so his very mother could come over there and feed his son. She was getting paid to feed her son. You talk about God. Amen. God's got a way sometimes your enemies will have to bless you. If you're living right and you're blessed by God, he'll make your enemies. Even the Egyptians will feed the children of God. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Amen. God said, I can get it to you when you need it. And he'll get it to you. God provides. But here are all the sons, now they've come down, still in Egypt here, 17 years, 147 years. And I want to say, now this is not always, many people do not have an opportunity as uh, Jacob here of old to do what he's doing. But he's been living for God, he's been blessed by God, and now he's making preparation. He's making funeral preparations here upon his deathbed. He knows the final stages. He's called in his family. Not everybody has an opportunity to say goodbye. People leave this world in various ways, don't they? Uh, death's no respecter of person. It comes to all ages. Some never make it out of their mother's womb and others can live for several years. But even the longest life is still a short life. Amen? Even if it was 147 years old. Amen? Amen? But death seemingly is no respecter. And here sometimes we don't always have an opportunity. But I've been many times seemingly the Lord uh, at various stages. And people, they've called in the family. The organs, people, as death begins to 
to come and sure enough the certain symptoms that the body always does, the organs begin to shut down. Sometimes they get to start developing what's called the death rattle and it won't be very long. The doctors begin, they call in all the family and all the loved ones gathered around and there's dad right there in the midst. He's in the midst and he calls his chief. He calls in Joseph here first. He lets him be known. Here's his, his uh, final request. And this is his last will and testament. But even in the, sometimes your last will and testament, you need to have one good testimony. And Jacob wanted in everything, he wanted even his very funeral to glorify the Lord. Amen. He wanted it to glorify the Lord. He said, I've got one request and I want you, he said, to carry me. He said, carry me. He had his burial plot already had been purchased by his grandfather of old Abraham back to there at the cave at Machpelah. He said, that's where I want to be buried, he said. Back there with Rebecca, back there with Rachel and Leah, back with those, he said, it's already been purchased and I want you to carry me back home. He had a longing to go back home. He was living down here in the world. He was living in Egypt, but he knew that was not his home, amen. Just like me and you, this old world's not my home, amen. Still a wayfaring pilgrim traveling through. He's looking for a better place and he had a little homesick. But even then, this earthly, if all you see is a natural bones, you will miss this point. He had something more relevant than that to say. He had something else, it's spiritual. He said, I will lie with my fathers. Jacob later would give up the very ghost as he pulled his knees and laid up on that bed and the bed is always used for rest and he was go to sleep in the Lord. It is not scriptural at times. There is no such thing as soul sleeping. There is no such thing as being reincarnated and coming back as a frog and going through some revolving doors or any of these things. But Jacob, he said he gave up the ghost. And when death comes for me or it comes for you, your spirit, your soul will leave your body and you're going on. It's up to you where you choose where you're going. Jacob said, I want to dwell in the promised land. He said, I want to go be with my forefathers before. I may be leaving you children down here. Come gather around. He said, I want to pray and bless you, he said, and speak good things up over you. But sooner or later, I've got to be leaving. And I want to tell you, good men still die, but the ministry still goes on. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you want to honor somebody, honor the living. Take care of the living. Amen. Take care of those that are behind. But he says still. And there's only two places that God in the spiritual realm. I know naturally death comes at times. And I like what Mr. Moody said one time. And he said, if you read in the papers, he said, D.L. Moody has died. He said, believe not a word of it for I'm alive evermore. Amen. He said, I'm alive evermore. But time the obituary hits the paper, I tell you what, before the coroner ever shows up, Brother Charlie, I say they were absent from the body and were present with the Lord all the way through the skies, 